Well, here we are. We're doing thermal regulation three in our series, and I'm subtitling this the thermal neutral zone. This is a zone of, now careful what I'm saying, a zone of the ambient temperature where basal metabolic rate is all that's needed to maintain body temperature. So it's also called environmental temperature, ambient temperature, wherever the animal or person is, that's their thermal neutral zone. And we're going to find out it's a zone of temperatures, or range, probably a better way of saying that, where the animal or person is most comfortable and is putting the minimum amount of metabolism to keep the body at the normal. I think in human engineering, they call it the comfort zone. But usually when you talk about animals, we talk about the thermal neutral zone. And uh, always looking for cute pictures, of course. And here's two buddies. And uh, they're probably in their thermal neutral zone. Now, I'm not sure if they'll get hot under that sheet that somebody put there. But uh, they look pretty comfortable. And good care of animals, when you care for your animals, you always try to have them in the thermal neutral zone. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some of this stuff in front of you. I'll pause and then things will appear magically. But of course, you know, you could pause it as well. And uh, what we've got here on the x-axis, well, first of all, I should say I've got like two graphs on top of each other. Whenever you do this, the x-axis is the same. So this is ambient temperature down here. I don't have to label this again up here. It's ambient temperature, both x-axes. And then on the top, I'm going to monitor body temperature. And of course, you know, our animals are endotherms, homeotherms. They're going to maintain a constant body temperature over a certain range of environmental temperatures. But then I'm going to show you how things can go bad as well. And of course, we've heard of these stories where dogs or kids are locked in cars on a hot day and it's terrible. And of course, then those individuals suffer hyperthermia. I guess if it was winter and you're locked in a car, you would suffer hypothermia. We'll talk about it. The lower graph on the y-axis is metabolic rate. Okay, so that's metabolism. And I did say basal metabolic rate. I'm going to pause and draw a few more things and then come back. Okay, I've made some things appear and I want to define them for you. And then I'll pause it again and build some more on this figure I'm making. Let's go over here to the far left where it says summit metabolism. I've drawn a line on the um, y-axis. That's the most heat that an animal can produce. Okay, And then down here, basal metabolic rate. That's the lowest amount of heat that an animal can produce. So you can see there's a range there. And of course, this is all talking about metabolic rate or metabolism. And then I've put in LCT and UCT down here on the x-axis. And that'll be spelled out perhaps in some other figures. They will. Uh, some I'll show you that other people have drawn. Because the more you can look at these things, the better. But the LCT is an ambient temperature that any cooler than this, that means over here, then the animal has to produce more heat. And then the upper critical temperature, that's the hot end, let's put it that way, of the thermal neutral zone. And if you go hotter than that, that means the environment gets hotter than that, the animal has to expend more energy to try to cool off, like a dog panting, for example. OK, now I've added data to the line. On the top, notice body temperature is in red. OK, and here's our thermal neutral zone. Remember, body temperature will fluctuate a little bit. Of course, it's never going to be spot on like for a dog, 101.5. It's going to vary up and down a little bit, maybe by half a degree. But what I want to show you then is that I've drawn two other lines here. This one here is like 
the point where if it gets any colder, then the animal will start dying. The tissue will freeze. So, you know, this was called lower critical temperature. Now I'm down on the bottom there, lower critical temperature. This one might be called the absolute lower critical temperature. And you'll see some graphs about this that are labeled absolute lower critical temperature. So in this range, body temperature stays normal because metabolism, heat production increases. Okay. And so then the body is able to adjust in this zone. It adjusts by increasing heat production. It can't go any more than summit. So if it gets colder than this point, tissue starts freezing and the animal will die sooner or later. See how temperature also goes down? Body temperature, that is, because we're on the cool end of the zone. And so you'll see other figures will say death by hypothermia, or at least you start having hypothermia, the dog. Now this, now I'm down on the bottom again, to the right of the UCT, the upper critical temperature, where my red pointer is, this might be called the absolute upper critical temperature. Well, if you go higher than that, the body temperature starts rising. So you would have hyperthermia, right? Now the interesting thing on the blue line here is it'd really be nice um, between in this zone to decrease heat production. But remember, you can't go below basal. So the dog pants, well, that makes muscles contract. And so you're going to make more heat, actually. But it's still going to have a normal body temperature because the panting is going to get rid of more heat than the muscles produce heat from panting. But after this line, then things go bad. It's just too hot for the body. So this is the upper, this is the absolute upper critical temperature down here. So hopefully you can follow those lines and then I will be showing you other figures like this because other people use different names and it's good to see a variety of things. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is show you some of these same drawings that I made, but other people have different labels, different ways. Notice how we never told you what the temperature actually is, that lower critical temperature or any of them down on the x-axis. And I'll explain that later, but it depends what animal you're talking about. So let me rapidly go through this. You can pause it, of course. There's a thermal neutral zone, lower critical temperature, upper critical temperature. They're calling it the upper lethal temperature. That's another name for this point where body temperature stays normal, but then once you get hotter than that, remember this is environmental, and they're calling it ambient, same difference, then the body temperature goes up and you could die, or you have hyperthermia, the dog does, and at the extreme you die of hyperthermia. And remember then, this is bad for tissue to get that hot, so then tissue starts dying, and if tissue starts dying, then it's producing less heat, because this, think of this as heat production, right? On the left side, remember, we get colder, but we can adjust our heat production up to the summit and maintain body temperature. But if it gets colder than this point, which is the lower lethal temperature, they're calling it, then tissue starts freezing, and then frozen tissue doesn't make any heat. Okay, let me show you another one. This might be talking about birds, but it's still the same principles, okay? So here we've got the thermal neutral zone right here, right? Between the lower critical temperature and the upper critical temperature. Then they've named the upper lethal temperature and the lower lethal temperature. Everything's good. Basal metabolic rate here, normal temperature. You get a little cooler, normal temperature. Why? The body makes more heat. But after this point, then we start getting too cold. We can't make more heat and things start freezing and become non-functional. Hypothermia. Okay, they call this normal thermia, I guess, over there. And then on the hot end, hyperthermia, of course, is when you get above the upper lethal temperature. This doesn't show the downward uh, point, but definitely you're going to have met metabolic rate go up for a while, but then over time it's going to go down. They just don't show it. And then here's the body temperature. Now they make a good point. 
Evaporative cooling is very important on the hot end of the scale. Okay, on the other end of the scale, you're using metabolic heat that you're producing to be normal. Okay, I'm going to explain one more figure. I'm going to not enlarge it real large right now because I want us to read the print on the side, right? The thermal neutral zone, the zone of environmental temperatures, which uh, metabolic rate is at basal. And then they define basal metabolic rate. And then below and above the thermal neutral zone, an animal has to increase its metabolic rate, okay? So now, let me enlarge this thing here. Again, it's very similar to what we've done before, body temperature. I think they're talking about humans here. But over a long range, we can maintain our body temperature. And then there's, again, they've got this zone. And they've, like me, showed after a certain point, metabolic activity goes down because tissue is dying. And then you have, you're able to make more and more heat up to a certain point, And then after that, you have your tissue start freezing. So your heat production goes down. And of course, you can read the bottom. But again, it's very similar. Everybody displays it a little differently. And it's good to see more than one type of graph. That way you can say, oh, I know how to explain this, whether I've ever seen it before or not. OK, now I want to talk a little bit about the lower critical temperature and maybe somewhat the upper critical temperature. Remember, those are the two things that are the, side, the ends of the thermal neutral zone. So I know we don't usually talk about calves, but I want to show you this graph, figure, illustration, whatever you want to call it. And they've just, they're talking about lower critical temperature here, that thermal neutral zone, and then the upper critical temperature. They're not showing any other part than that. The one thing you should realize is there's a lot of variability in what's the lower critical temperature for even a certain species. It can change dramatically. And that's why I haven't really given you any of those figures yet. And a good figure, like I've shown you before, doesn't show any values down there because it depends on what animal. depends on if they're pregnant or not, if they're milking or not, um, it, you know, uh, how long their hair coat is. And another thing that it depends on is acclimation. If an animal acclimates to its environment over time, it's going to change its lower critical temperature. Okay, so that's one thing you should be aware of. It's hard to put numbers here. But now, these people for calves, they said that the lower critical temperature is like uh, 59 degrees if the animal is less than 21 days of age. Okay, and then once they get old, older than 21 days, then it drops to 42. They're probably getting more body weight on them. I'm sure. And then the upper critical temperature happens to be 82. And they say beyond both of these ranges, you have to expend more energy. And we already know that. So let me tell you some of the values for some animals. OK, now I've got this data for Eskimo dog. And they're saying in the reference I was reading, this point here, lower critical temperature for an Eskimo dog. Now remember, they've always lived in cold for generations. This point is minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit. Now it's kind of hard to believe, but that dog genetically is made for that snow, okay? Now I've got an, a figure for a horse. Uh, let's see, got to get my right thing to drag it. I'm, also, I'm always talking about the lower critical temperature now here. One reference I saw for a horse was five degrees F, but I also no, saw another one that it would be about 40 degrees F, or very similar to the figure they have for the calf. It depends on the coat length, if they're acclimated to it. Uh, it's amazing, all the things that can go in here. So never be too concerned about having exact figures because, for example, sheep, if they have a certain length of fleece, let's say two, three inches, and then you shear them, take the fleece off, that automatically makes their lower critical temperature higher. So like, let's see, let's say it's here for a sheep that has like two inches of wool. If you shear it, 
it's going to be able to stand the cold less, and that means it's got a new lower critical temperature. So you can, in that example, you can change the lower critical temperature of an animal just by taking off its protection, its insulation. Okay, and metabolism is very important too. Uh, the more a dairy cow milks, the better she can stand cold because she's a walking furnace when she's making, listen to this, 100 pounds of milk a day. Do you know that's, you know, a gallon is about eight pounds. So what's that? 12 gallons of milk a day from one cow. Think of it. Go buy 12 gallons and say, one cow did this today. Well, that's a lot of metabolism. And I'll give you her number. It's way over here. A high producing dairy cow. Remember the Eskimo dog was minus 22? The high producing dairy cow, minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. It's lower critical temperature. That means it's thermal neutral zone. <laughs> doesn't end until minus 40. Of course, here's another thing. The lower your lower critical temperature is, the lower your upper critical temperature is. It's going to shift that way as well. So that high producing dairy cow, it's going to get hot probably whenever it gets 70 or above, maybe even 65. Amazing stuff. And of course, we want to keep our pets and in this case, dogs comfortable when it gets hot. And I found this little public service uh, announcement, I guess. It's talking about heat stroke and hot asphalt. You know, asphalt is usually black and we haven't said it yet. We will in an upcoming thermal uh, lesson, but black is a color that absorbs the most radiant heat from the sun. And here they're trying to say, I'm over here on the far left, uh, press the back of your hand firmly against the asphalt for seven seconds to verify that it's comfortable for your dog. Yeah. Anyway, they showed air temperature, right? That would be ambient temperature around the dog, or at least maybe up a little higher. They didn't say where they measured it. And then they measured the asphalt, right? And you can do that with one of those infrared thermometers. And look at the air temperature is 77, but you would assume this is going to be on a, um, I guess, they're, are they talking about, yeah, direct sun, no wind, very low humidity, yeah, and high radiant energy. So they're saying the sun's out in full blast. The air might be 77, but the asphalt's 125. That's going to be pretty hot. And it says down here at 125, skin destruction can occur in 60 seconds. But then when you get hotter, look at how it goes up. 143 degrees and it's talking about how you can fry an egg at 131 and then when it's hot outside the cars heat up very fast and I would not doubt it can go fat higher than 120 degrees in that car so it's amazing watch out for your pets and the other thing they make a good point is um, zero wind because remember wind depends on the temperature of the wind but a lot of times it has a cooling effect and when I talked about just previously all those thermal neutral zones and the lower critical temperature, one assumption is that there's no wind because then wind adds what's called wind chill, which we'll be talking about later. And so it messes up that chart a little bit because when there's wind out there, then an animal is going to lose heat faster on that lower end of the temperature range. And Finally, here's a list of those great illustrations, those thermal neutral zones and figures look more professional but, than mine, but I tried to build one at, step at a time for you. Okay, see you next time.